before we start, please watch my previous video. The link will be in the description. Mateo Roach returned for his 16th game on Jeopardy. She won a 15th day total of $352,781. Ken Jennings' instruction was, by the age of 23, Guglielmo Marconi had sent his first wireless message. Historical figure Ken. Besides, I think it's Guglielmo. Guglielmo Marconi. Jennifer Lawrence had earned three Oscar nominations, and Serena Williams had won six Grand Slam singles titles, but none of them, none of them, I'm quite sure, had won 15 consecutive games of Jeopardy. Well, that's what Mate well, that's what Matea has done over the past three weeks on our show, and I doubt there's a 23-year-old in the world who isn't impressed by that. I'll tell you what, this 47-year-old certainly is. A bit of an odd preamble from Ken since Marconi was the only one named who wasn't even in the same lifetime as Jennifer Lawrence or Serena Williams. I know Jennifer was born in 1990 and I had to look up Serena's age. Her date of birth. <laughs> this also would have been a good time to mention previous Jeopardy champion Matt Jackson, who was also 23 when he won 13 games on Jeopardy. This is also a good time to mention, a lot of fans seem to be impressed that Matea is doing so well for her age. They're saying, oh, she's 23. Maybe it's a generational thing, because I, I didn't see this when Matt Jackson won 13 games. Maybe it's a generational thing. Now, of course, Marconi was a historical figure, so he was the obvious outlier. Matea sort of is too, since Serena, Jennifer, and Matt were all millennials. When I said I would have thought Kira Donegan was older and was shocked that Brandon Smith was so young, this is why. It just feels so out of place. Matea is the youngest champion to ever win as much as she did on Jeopardy, a record also previously held by Matt Jackson. Am I nitpicking too much? <laughs> Alright, let's go to the game. Matea got all three of the daily doubles. Matea got the first daily double almost immediately at the start of the game. She wagered 1,000, and the question was easy for me as it was for Matea. Now known to historians as the Migration Period, the early Middle Ages were long known by this name implying ignorance. Other than the fact that early Middle Ages gave it right away, I looked up the different sources to ask why was it called the Dark Ages and when it took place. I read all about the Dark Ages through different sources. This came in handy once when it was briefly talked about in my philosophy class. I just knew it was the Dark Ages. Matei started the game in a streak of right answers. I noticed Ken never mentioned she ran the Middle Ages category. He always does whenever a champion answers all five questions in one perfect go. Again. I know I'm nitpicking. I used to be fascinated when learning about the Middle Ages, so this would have been my category as much as it was Matea's. That's probably also how I picked up on the fact that Ken didn't comment that she ran that category. Ray was the first to buzz in and answer correctly after Matea's streak. Matea talked about her first kiss in the many actual interviews, which Ken described as a doozy. So, Ken mentioned the different successes from other people by the age of 23. Here's one that's the complete opposite. By 23, I still didn't have my first kiss. <laughs> Peter Parker has worked as a photographer for this newspaper created long before Spider-Man was. How do they not get the Daily Bugle? <laughs> you know what else? This should have been the Daily Double. Daily Double? Daily Bugle? Rhea wasn't an answer. Rhea. What, what is, is the New, New York, York Times? Times? Which is incorrect. No, Nikki buzzed in and answered, What is the New York Post? The New York Post? Sorry, also Which incorrect. is also incorrect. <laughs> Matea is not, is a, not a Spider-Man. Spider -Man. The answer was the Daily Bugle. One could claim they were thrown off as the question included that the newspaper was created long before Spider-Man was. Even then, people would know the name of the newspaper if they saw the 2002 film or any of the cartoons growing up. Rest in peace, Paul Souls, you kind soul. Rest in peace, Paul Souls, you kind soul. At least their incorrect answer lets us know they know that Spider-Man takes place in New York. <laughs> you know what? Ken is around Tobey Maguire's age. He would have made a good Spider-Man. <laughs> Well, he said he's 47 now, so he may be a bit too old to play the live-action character. I could definitely hear him doing the voice of Spider-Man, though. <laughs> I remember Madame Odio missed a Venom question that was a promotion for the film Venom, Let There Be Carnage. He asked, what's, uh, Spawn? I also suggested it'd be a fun idea to show this clip to fans of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Well, you can show them this clip, too. A Swedish astronomer gave his name to this temperature scale. Matteo Bazinan answered, what is Fahrenheit, which was incorrect. Then Rhea buzzed in and answered, what is Celsius, which was the right answer. I just wanted to point out, the Canadian guessed Fahrenheit, and the American answered Celsius. My guess was actually Kelvin. My guess was actually Kelvin, and after I heard Matea answer him correctly, for some reason, 
I remembered it was Celsius. <laughs> Besides, Fahrenheit looks like a German name. <laughs> Matei ended the first round winning $8,000. Ray was in second place at $3,800. And Nikki was in the red at negative $400. Matei got the first daily double in double jeopardy. She did a 4000 again. Like Amy Schneider's trademark. <laughs> this is the funniest daily double. <laughs> Unfortunately, I can't recreate the authentic laughing as when I first saw this clip. <laughs> Here's Matea's answer. What are, I don't remember the name, but the things that the, you use to swing the incense around. This kind of sounds like a family <laughs> no, feud moment. I'm sorry. <laughs> Matea got the second daily double in Double Jeopardy, and she's been dominating Double Jeopardy. She waited 2000 this time, got it right, and went to $23,200. It was another one of the easiest daily doubles. This farm family toured the United States in the 1940s, then settled on a Vermont farm. The answer is who are the lawn traps, and the performing family kind of gave it away. <laughs> Nikki can get it out of the red. Nikki can get out of the red. How do I say this? Nikki ended double jeopardy winning negative 800. Though it's not winning if you're still in the red. Uh, yeah, it was still the one to answer the last question in double jeopardy. See why I say I don't know how to say this. <laughs> we were left with a funny reaction. What's Dallas? Dallas is correct, hey! Nikki. Pump <laughs> it up, pump it up. I feel worse because Nikki mentioned a donation in many anecdotal interviews. Ray was in second place at 5000 and Mateo was in the lead at $23,200. The final Jeopardy category was African surnames. The question was, how do I pronounce this? Adetokounmpo, the crown has returned from overseas, is fitting for the Adetokounmpo family who left Nigeria for this country in 1991. I was thinking of other African countries before guessing France, and I ultimately guessed Australia. Before the answers were revealed, Ken mentioned this looks like maybe a demographic clue, but it's a sports clue in disguise. The answer was Greece, and that made so much more sense after looking at the phrase in the question a second time. Ray was the only one to answer correctly. Matea risked 7000 and went down to $16,200. She's now at a 16-day total of $368,981. The overheard on set for this game was Giannis, I'm sorry. Nikki was a basketball fan and would have got this right. I cannot do the video or Nikki's reaction justice, so check that out for yourself in the description. Or in the comment section, whichever I decide to. <laughs> Congratulations to Matea. She's getting closer to Dave Madden and Jason DeFranieri's records. 16 games is impressive. And as always, thank you for watching.